Now I see in the places I go, I see an awful lot of burned out believers. I mean, uh, people at once, the fire seemed to burn brightly within, but it, the flame has flickered down mighty low now. I want to talk tonight to those who are discouraged and depressed, disappointed, disheartened, disillusioned, desperate, many burned out, others backed up, and some just all being out of shape. I won't be hammering on you. I'm not sure what the Word of God might do. I won't be hollering at you. I won't be trying to hurt you because I believe God wants to help you get up on His mountain to higher ground. Now let's go back and look at this scripture again. I believe within it we can see the secret to spiritual health and uh, spiritual there's an awful lot, as I said, of folks that have eased up, backed up, quit. And some would say, well, they just never did have anything from the first. The Baptist, the older Baptist used to say, faith that uh, fizzles for the finish was faulty from the first. <laughs> And I know a lot of times that's uh, probably very true. They never had anything, and they acted like they did for a while, and then they quit acting like they did and just went off back into the ways of the world. But folks, I don't believe that every person or even half of those that I've seen profess faith and the Lord Jesus Christ really were just putting on, never really had anything. An awful lot of them, sure enough, got saved. But something went terribly wrong. I don't know. Wrong crowd, uh, uh, wrong marriage, wrong something. And something went uh, badly wrong. And they don't even go to church anymore. Some that once were pretty active, uh, uh, they go a little along when they want to. What used to be called part-time church, they say now that's full-time. Oh, if you go a couple times a month, an awful lot of folks say, well, that's, that's pretty well full-time church worker right there. That didn't used to get you much, but now it'll get you, you know, you're doing pretty good half of the time or whatever. But uh, an awful lot of uh, good people, saved people, have just got all discouraged, all disillusioned. Some will say, Oh, I got my feelings hurt down there at the church. You probably, as many times as I've been here in revival, you've heard me make this statement before. That's some of that Baptist tongue speaking. And I'm an interpreter. And what that really means is I'm mad. I didn't get my way, and I'm mad as fire about it. And I ain't going down there to that church no more unless they come and beg me because I got my feelings hurt. <laughs> I just say right off, get over it. <laughs> get over it. You're a bigger person than that if you're sure enough saved. The Lord that lives in you, His righteousness imputed unto you makes you bigger than that. So get over it. As I said, a lot of folks just kind of been out of shape. But uh, it's not a new thing to get discouraged. It's not a new thing to get depressed. 
It's said about that great English preacher of another century, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, that sometimes old Spurgeon would get so depressed that he would stay in his room for days or weeks at a time, just couldn't come out and face the world. But then by the grace of God, God would help him get past it. And once again, that great voice of service to God would ring out in the churches in London as he preached Jesus Christ, him crucified, and the hope of eternity. And here we see this mighty prophet of, uh, of God, Elijah, I mean Elijah, there, there weren't many like Elijah in Bible times or in uh, modern times either. What a man of God. Just been up on the uh, mountain of victory there at uh, Carmel. Brother Herb, you really helped me last night by going ahead and preaching about that because that means I won't need to. But what a, what a victory. But then it was time to come down in the valley of Jezreel. You know, most of our things in life, we measure time from mountain to mountain or valley to valley. My brother, you, you'll you always, the rest of your life, you'll measure some of your time from that year you spent uh, in the hospitals. We measure it from the time we got saved or the time we got married or the time we got rich. Uh, if we ever got that way. But the mountains are sometimes from the valleys. So the time came he had come down from the mountain and now he was in the valley of Jezreel and he got word, they're going to kill you, Elijah. And Elijah went on the run. He was getting out of town. They were going to kill him. He had nothing to fear, but at the time, the devil had him convinced. The devil had you, ever had you convinced of anything? Well, he has, and me also. And he's a liar and the father of liars, but he's a mighty persuasive liar. And the devil was lying to Elijah, but old Elijah was believing it. And he went off there, got way out of town where they weren't going to find him. And he sat down under a juniper tree and he had himself a pity party. You ever had one of those? Most of us had a pity party or two also. And there he began to pray in verse uh, 4. He said, Lord, it's enough. Just let me die. I'm no better than my father's. Just let me die. I just want to die. They're trying to kill me. Just let me die out here in the wilderness. But what he didn't know, he never was going to die. <laughs> He's going to be caught up <laughs> by the Lord uh, on down in a few months. Uh, I may get back to that Friday night. I'm not promising, but but anyway, there he was praying to die. But he's not the only mighty man of God that's ever been in that shape. Or oh, I read in the Bible in the book of Daniel chapter 8 where Daniel saw a vision from God and the vision so shook him and disturbed him that he was sick and weak and uh, unable to function in a normal way. And for some amount of time, he remained in that condition. But then the Bible says of Daniel that he arose and did the king's business. You remember 
you uh, soldier for the king, you do the business for King Jesus. So, if you've backed up, slacked up, let up, given up, gotten depressed, disillusioned, disheartened, got your feelings hurt, whatever it is, as I said earlier, time to get over it. Because there's king's business that you need to be helping with. When you're not doing your part, somebody else is having to carry your part of the load as well. So get up from there and start helping in the king's work. And, but then I read in the Bible about Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, nobody believed him. He told them what was coming because he got it from God, but nobody wanted to hear it. Oh, I went to see my cardiologist yesterday and I told somebody he x-rayed my billfold and said there's some in there. Better come back next year and get the rest of it. But he told me I was doing fine. <laughs> but he's a Christian uh, doctor. And he said, I talk to a lot of my patients and tell them they've got a heart problem all right. But it's not the kind they think it is. It's a problem between them and God. And he said, you know what? They don't want to hear that. (laughs) And I said, yeah, I know that right well. (laughs) There's an awful lot of people don't want to hear what I say either. And a lot of times the ones that need it the worst is the ones that don't want to hear it. And Jeremiah was so discouraged Daddy said, I quit, I give up, I'm not going to preach anymore. But then he said the word of God burned in his bones like a fire. And he could not stay, so he preached on. Preacher, you ever feel like that? (laughs) Oh, son, I know you's trying. The Word of God's going to burn your bones. You may think you're going to quit, but you're not. Because <laughs> the Word of God burns in your bones. I've been there, done that. Or how about, uh, how about uh, Joseph when his own brothers sold him into slavery? <laughs> oh, that had to hurt old Joseph. I mean, your own brothers hate you so much that they'd sell you to be a slave. And he surely was when he was there in prison at one time. He surely was discouraged. But he went about the Lord's business. Or there are others. Oh, I'd think of... uh, I'd think of Jacob, Joseph's father. And remember Jacob, uh, when uh, his brothers took him that uh, coat of many colors that he had made for his son Joseph, and they had covered that coat of many colors with with the blood of of a goat and... uh, Joseph or Jacob looked at that boy's coat and he knew whose coat that was and he saw that blood and he said some beast has killed my boy. My boy's dead. Or how about King David when they told him Absalom his oldest son his blessed boy Absalom was dead and he began to weep and cry and say Absalom my Absalom I would to God that it was me Absalom do you know what it feels like to have somebody tell you you, your son's dead well I do you never know what a sorrow is until you get the kind of message David got. 
Absalom, Absalom. Oh, we'd trade places with him in a minute if we had the power to do that. Oh, David was in sorrow, but there was work to do, and he had to get on with the work. Our trials here are but for a moment, just for a little while. But there was, uh, there was uh, uh, Elijah down and out, depressed and hurting. But, now listen, but the God that is was still looking on. God's got this. All these problems in the world today, don't you forget, God's got this. God's got this. And while he was there asleep under the juniper tree, God had sent an angel. And that angel of the Lord awakened him and said, Behold, Behold, arise and eat. And Elijah looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals. Now, don't miss that. There's more there than you see in. And a cruise of water in his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and repeated the message, but he added a little this time. He touched him and said, verse 7, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. You're not going to be able to do this, Elijah, mighty man of God. This is too tough for you. This journey is too great for you. You arise and eat this food and drink this water prepared for you. You've got a way to go yet, and you're going to need the strength of this cruise of water and this uh, little whole cake or flour cake baking there on the coals. And so... He ate it, and he continued on the journey, in verse 8, 40 days and 40 nights. There's a whole lot of symbolism there, but I won't chase that rabbit. But uh, you know some of the instances of the 40 days and 40 nights. But he was able to go 40 days and 40 nights, on the strength or the nutrition of that one little old cake and that one cruise of water. Now, that's some pretty powerful stuff. (laughs) He got that from the Lord. Only the Lord can bake up that kind of cake or produce that kind of water. And he made his way to the mountain of God. And if we study more, about him, we find that when he got there, he climbed up on the mountain of God, and there God spoke to him again. He climbed the mountain of God. But here's what I want you to see. Now, here's the rich part. Here's the part you can take home with you and think about it, and then take it with you the rest of your life. That bread and that water was very, very symbolic of something that was to come. Now, you that have read your Bible, and I'd hope it'd be all of you, over there in uh, the fourth chapter of John, talking to the woman at the well, What did he tell her about the water? The water of life. (laughs) He said he was that water. You drink at that fountain, 
you drink from that well, you'll never thirst again. And then right there toward the very end of the Bible in Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, we are invited to Brother Herb to drink of the water of life freely. Drink all you want. Oh, yeah, I think you only need to get saved that one time, but if you're hungry tomorrow, come back and get you some more Jesus. Tomorrow, if you, if you need to drink at that fountain, it's all right. Drink freely of that mountain or of that uh, water because there's mountains to climb. And you don't need to spend your days in the valley of defeat. Oh, we had to pass somewhere close to the valley of the shadow of death, and uh, we don't want to spend all our days with that dark shadow of death all around us and all over us. And so he said, uh, you need to climb the mountain of God you eat that cake and you drink that water, you've got a 40-day travel, 40-day journey ahead of you. And so he ate and he drank. Now there's a lot more here than I'll uh, be able to preach tonight, but I wrote something down somewhere I sure wanted to mention there. Sometimes, now catch this, notice this. Sometimes the answer is in the fire. <laughs> I don't know who built that fire. I can't say for sure that Elijah didn't already have a little fire started. But I'm prone to believe that the angel of God furnished that fire. <laughs> and sometimes... Uh, Oh, who was it used to sing the answer's blowing in the wind? Sometimes the answer's there in the fire. And we don't much want to look for the answer there. But when he looked in the fire, there was the cake baking there on the fire. Oh, Moses. When he looked into the burning bush of that, when he knew the will of God. The Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, they found the answer. They had said, uh, if God helps us and if not, still, still we're sticking with God. But the answer, when they threw them into the fire, the answer was in the fire. And there in the fire, there was the fourth man walking. And Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked in, he got his answer too. <laughs> when he looked in, he got his answer. And it looked to him like the Son of God was there walking in the fire. Now, we got trouble in America, bad trouble. Amen. I mean, with an $18 trillion debt, uh, Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to get into politics. I'm going to tell you, God's not a Democrat or a Republican. He wouldn't go along with the Pharisees and Sadducees <laughs> or the Herodians or the Zealots. But uh, for my part, now just for my tiny little part, I heard somebody say not too long ago, it's the clown or the crook. <laughs> what a choice. <laughs> and I don't know who they were talking about now, <laughs> but, but I listened. <laughs> it might be the clown or the crook. <laughs> and we may say our country is beyond help. Oh, the church has got problems. Uh, your family's got problems. Uh, you may be in the uh, Valley of Jezreel, depressed. The devil may have you on the run. Don't be afraid. Fear not, little flock. <laughs> God's got this. Because God is. God is. And God's got this. Oh, Isaiah, I believe in chapter 43, talked about 
Oh, that he created us, and uh, if we were in the stream, he was with us. If we were in the fire, he was with us. God has got this. But we in America may have to look at a little fire. We may have to look at a little fire, but fear not, little flock. God is. And Jesus said that he was the water of life, but also in the sixth chapter of John, he said that he was that living bread that came down from heaven. Hey, you want to know how to gain strength for the journey? You want to climb up the mountain of God? Hey, let God help you and climb way on up and stand on higher ground. Don't spend the rest of your life in the valley of the shadow of death. Climb up high. And if you're going to climb up high, you're going to have to be drinking of the fountain and eating of the bread of life because that's where the energy is, my brother, to get past the hard times and the troubles in this old world. Oh, they, there's going to be people that love you, preacher, awful good, and there's going to be people that don't love you at all. And believe me, I know somewhat of where I speak. I've heard folks say, well, everybody seems like they love you, Brother Seaburn. And I say, you don't know some of the folks I know. <laughs> you don't know some of the folks I know. But you call it what it is, brother, and all you preachers. And you don't have to be a preacher, ladies, men, teachers. Don't you let the devil drive you down that road to defeat, depression, where you drop out, where you back up, give up. But sometimes you may have to look into the fire. It wouldn't surprise me a bit if uh, in some few years, if you want to see Brother Tommy Johnson, you may have to go down to the jailhouse. Because he looks to me like a jailbird. <laughs> if uh, and when the day comes that you'll be charged with a hate crime for preaching about gay marriage and abortion, uh, we may all see us sometime behind bars. But if it comes to that, if you have to walk through the fire, Trust the Lord. God has this. God has this. Hey, there was the cake on the fire, and there was the cruise of water. Because God is that I am of the Old Testament. Time and time again, Jesus repeated those words. Oh, he said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, oh, time after time, he used that same phrase, I am. And that great I am didn't die. That great I am, through his only begotten son, came and dwelt among us. And he even now looks down on you. That great I am will furnish you the bread and the water. And what bread and water it is, 40 day journey kind of bread and water. Are you serving God? Are you working as hard for the Lord as you used to be? Have you got discouraged, disheartened, depressed? Don't give up. Don't let up. Don't back up. Don't shut up. Stand up. Speak up. For Jesus Christ, this is all going to be